my friends. Welcome to God Focus this morning. The title of today's episode, Birthright. Down through the ages when the father would pass away, the firstborn son was in a position of being the head of the family. He would inherit most of the wealth of the family, and he would be in charge of taking care of his widowed mother. Any sisters he had would have to have his permission to marry. It was his birthright. The sons who were born second or after received property and other things, but did not have the authority as head of the family. I was reading the story of Isaac's sons, Esau and Jacob. As I read the part of the story that said Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of beans, I thought about how crazy that was. He gave up long-term wealth and security. He gave up being in a position of making a difference in the world for a moment of fulfilling his appetite. As I pondered this, I started thinking about how we, as children of God, all have been given a birthright. All of us who are born again are on even ground. We are all going to inherit our Father's kingdom, unless we give up our birthright and walk away from God. Esau was hungry, and that was an appetite of the flesh. He didn't care what he had to give up. He just wanted that hunger satisfied. It is the same way with people today. Our flesh sometimes wants things that are sinful. The enemy has bombarded us for so long that sometimes in a moment of weakness, we yield to our flesh. In committing that sin, we are giving up our birthright. We are treating the cross like it is unimportant. Like Esau, he was hungry for food again in a few hours. Giving up his birthright didn't fix that hunger long term. Neither does giving in to a sinful desire. Esau couldn't get his birthright back. We, however, can if we repent of our sins. Grace is not something to be treated like a get-out-of-jail-free card. In America, we have heard the story of the cross so much that we have become desensitized to it. We have become desensitized to the horror that Christ suffered on that cross. If we truly love God and are truly saved, we will not want to walk in our flesh. We will not want to hurt Jesus by being nonchalant about sin. I'm not saying that we are perfect or ever will be perfect, but we need to do all we can to walk fully aware of the enemy's tactics. We do have power to resist the devil. The word says if we resist him, he has to flee. It all comes down to our willingness to walk like a child of God. We cannot keep temptation from coming our way, and we cannot keep the enemy from trying to find our weakness. But we can stay in the word and walk as close as possible to God. If we keep our mind on Jesus, the enemy has less of our attention to intrude upon. Think about what Esau gave up. His grandfather Abraham was blessed by God and had great wealth. That wealth became Isaac's when Abraham was gone. Esau gave up land, cattle, sheep, servants, and great wealth because he didn't take seriously his position in life. He didn't truly understand or accept his place in the family. I try to stay positive and encouraging, but this message has been on me heavy today. I feel like someone is at that point of decision. Will you keep your place in the family, holding on to your birthright, or are you going to give it up for a moment of sin? There may not be a chance to come back from it. Life can turn on a dime and we never know when our time is up. I would not be doing what God wants if I didn't warn you to yield to God. Don't give in to the things of this world. As I was studying this, God God said, ask them, where will they be when the music stops? Will they have a seat at the table? I immediately thought of the game we played as children called Musical Chairs. There would be enough chairs in the group for everyone except one. When the music stopped, the last one standing that didn't get a seat was eliminated. There are enough seats at the marriage supper of the Lamb for those who are saved. We do not want to lose our seat at the table because we have willfully and blatantly committed sin without repentance. I don't want anyone's blood required at my hand. So I have to give you this warning today. Do not wait too late to yield your lives fully to Jesus. He is faithful to forgive us if we repent. 
Many think to repent means to say, I'm sorry for the sin that I've committed. But it has to be a heartfelt sorry, not just lip service. Repent also means that we will turn away from that sin and not look back. Repentance comes from deep within, when you realize you have broken God's laws and God's heart. It should break our heart, and we should truly be sorry. I often say that saying the sinner's prayer is like a bunch of words to most people. It doesn't cause true change. It is a temporary band-aid to each the conscience and allow preachers to say they got someone saved that day. But soon, the person is right back to their sinful life because the words do not sink in and they do not cause true change. The example I use when I talk about this is when I was in elementary school, we started each day with the Pledge of Allegiance. But I, until I was a lot older, I didn't understand what those words even meant. Uh, I feel the same goes for most people that say the sinner's prayer. I'm sure that are, there are a few that are the exception, that it was a start for them to learn to become a follower of Jesus. But at some point, they have had to truly cry out from their heart for God to make a change in them and save them from their sins. It comes down to this. I've learned over the years that being a Christian is less about the Christian things and the rituals and more about a connection on a personal level with the creator of the universe, the one true and living God that died on a cross for me and for you. I don't want to see anyone sell their birthright, the one that Jesus paid a high price to obtain for us, not for something fleeting, not for a momentary satisfaction of sin. I don't want to see anyone not have their chair at the supper table when Jesus calls us home. Again, I ask, where will you be when the music stops, when the trumpet sounds, when, when your last breath comes? Where will you be? Will you have a seat at the table? something to think about. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be bold, be brave, and keep your God focus. Like, share, and subscribe for more encouragement. Have a wonderful day.